There is a new exciting tool for us XR developers and it's called the Meta XR Runtime Optimizer. Now, as the name suggests, this tool will allow you to optimize your VR game at runtime by capturing a frame and giving you some insight on your game object, texture and materials. But the best part, it's not dependent on Meta Platform at all, so you can actually use it on any type of XR project. Now, in this video, I will guide you through the setup and show you some of the use cases that you can do with it. And if you are interested in learning how to optimize your VR game, I have another good news for you because I have also released my own tool on the Asset Store called the Auto VR Optimizer. This tool can analyze your settings and your scene and can give you more than 100 tickets on things you can improve. You can get it on the Asset Store or by joining us on Patreon. The link will be in the description. But without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so to test the Meta XR Runtime Optimizer, we are going to use this beautiful scene made by Unity. You can actually open it quite easily, simply by going to the Unity Hub. And if you go to New Project, then if you go to Sample, you can select the Universal 3D Sample, then click on Create Project. And there you go, this will create for you this beautiful project that contains this beautiful garden scene. But what do you guys notice? As you can see, I'm using here the XR Origin from the XR Interaction Toolkit by Unity and not the Meta SDK. So I just wanted to prove to you that the new tool by Meta actually worked with any XR SDK, not just the one from Meta. But now the question is, how oh, can we set up this tool inside this project? And actually, you can simply download it from the Asset Store over there. The link will be available in the description. We can download it and then click on Open in Unity to open it through the Package Manager. Okay, here we go. Now the MetaQuest Runtime Optimizer is inside our project. As you can see, we can simply close the Package Manager and then we can simply go to Meta Tools Quest Runtime Optimizer and this should open this window right there. Now, as you can see, all the steps to set up here the tool are available here. The first thing that you need to do is to connect your headset using a USB cable, which is the case for me. Then we need to go over there and toggle here this Quest Runtime Optimizer Enable. And then we need to build an APK in development mode. For this, we can simply click on Open Build Settings. This should open the build settings. And if you select Android here and enable Development Build, we can create a development build APK by simply clicking on build and run. Okay, so now that the APK is built, there is one last step that we can do before trying to analyze, before doing our first analysis. And actually, if you go at the top over there, you should see a enable Adreno offline compiler, which can give you some more information about the materials in your game. So make sure that this is enabled. And while trying to enable it, maybe it will ask you to download here this Qualcomm Adreno GPU offline compiler from Qualcomm website. But once you have downloaded it, everything should work right away and you should be able to enable it without any warning showing. Okay, so everything is now ready. At this point, you should see that the device is connected, but that the app is not launched. To launch the app, you can simply go here to the executable path. Normally, you should have the correct here APK path already written for you. Otherwise, you can simply modify it. But then we can simply launch the game by clicking on launch. And there we go. As you can see, I'm inside the application right now. And if we have a look at what's going on in Unity, you can see that everything is green and that the device is connected, which means that we can start with our analysis. And we have two kinds of analysis that we can perform with the Quest Runtime Optimizer. There is the bottleneck analysis that can capture a frame and give you some insight about what's going on in this frame, and the what-if analysis, which will basically disable all game objects one by one and measure the before and after of the frame GPU time. Of course, we will have a look at this a bit later on, but for now, let's try to capture a frame. If you click on additional option right there, you can make it so that the game freeze on the frame capture, and you can even recall automatically some frame when the frame rate of your game start to drop. Now, in my case, I will simply go down below and click on capture frame. Okay, once you capture a frame, it should appear like this one right there on the left side, and you can actually have a look at the different information already, like the frame per second, which are kind of low right now. See if the application is GPU and CPU bound, and the time it took for the CPU and GPU to compute this frame. But you can get a bit deeper than this because if we click on one of these frames, let me maybe increase the size of this window. There we go. As you can see, we can open the frame analysis in a new window. At the top, we have some inside 
that says that the texture cost is too high, that the draw cool count is high, that the vertex process cost is high, and finally that the vertex data cost is high as well. So these are some insights on what we should focus on if we want to optimize this scene for VR. And indeed, if we go down below, we can see that the draw cool count is above 1000, which is huge. As you can see, a value of under 300 is optimal. We can see that the triangle count is 138 which is kind of good so no triangle count issue and then if we scroll down below we can have a look at the different objects that are present in our scene so for example for the vertex analysis i can click over there to make it a bit bigger and i can see the different object name the vertex count that they have now, as you can see the bamboo structure has a weight of 5000 person which i think is a bug but it also means that maybe the vertex count of these meshes are a bit too high. Now, anyway, if I close this window and then I scroll back, we can have a look at now the texture analysis that will show you the memory usage of each one of your texture. We have the skybox, which takes 15% usage. So a good thing would be to actually use another skybox. We can also see that our light map takes a huge chunk of the memory usage. So maybe reducing the size of the light map would be a good idea here. Then if we go down below, we have something very cool. It is the material analysis with here instruction PSVS. PS mean pixel shader. VS mean vertex shader. So you don't need to know a lot about the rendering pipeline. The only thing that you can look at is here. There are some number and when the number are either yellow or red, it is bad. So for example, we can see that for the stone set that we can highlight here, the pixel shader for the stone set are super high. So maybe it will be good if we actually use a simpler shader for this one than the shader graph mouse. Same for this plan shader. This plan shader seems to be not very optimized. And if we scroll down below, also the water surface here is very bad. So maybe it will be a bit better to use something else. Now, what's really cool with this analysis inside Unity is that you can actually highlight each one of these materials and that you can have a look at them directly in the scene. For example, we have the water shader here. We have the stone set material and the different plant here. So yeah, this is super useful. And there you go, this sums up here the bottleneck analysis. As you can see, this is a very, very powerful tool. But there is a second analysis that I can share with you, and it is here the what if analysis. So let's click on scan object to show you what it can do for you. Okay, and here we go. After waiting a little bit, you can see what happened. There is close to 900 game object. And for each one of these game object, we have some times that are shared for each one of them. Now, like I mentioned before, what this time analysis does is basically disable all game object in front of the player one by one to show you each one of their cost. And this is what's happening here. It will give you here the cost of all of these objects and rank them for you to know which one you should optimize. Now, I'm not sure if this number is correct. It seems a bit too high for me. But anyway, as you can see, this gives you a precise analysis of what are the objects that takes a lot of time to compute and that you need to optimize. And there we go guys, this concludes our two analysis, so the bottleneck analysis and the what if analysis to present you this awesome quest runtime optimizer tool. And there you go guys, this sums up my little presentation of this awesome quest runtime optimizer. As you can see, it is very powerful and the best thing is that it can work for all XR projects. Now let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below and don't forget if you want to save hours when optimizing your VR project, we have released our own first Unity asset on the Asset Store, the Auto VR Optimizer. You can get it either on the Asset Store or by joining us on Patreon, the link is in the description and all that matter a big shout out to the new patreon who have joined lately thank you for watching and see you soon bye bye